Welcome back to the show, everybody. Check out these headlines here. We have Gasparino on the scene today. We're going to talk about that and Elizabeth Warren. SEC JW Verrett, you're going to want every bit of that. Stuart Alderati from the Ripple legal team. Who's really invested in blockchain? We got Ripple X and Global Payments. We got W3C today. Ashish Birla, Ripple Partners, in fact, are dismantling Swift. Somebody roll that beautiful intro. Here we go. Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at Dig Perspectives at the top of the screen and at Digital Perspectives News on Facebook. We do Sunday morning exclusive lives there. Make sure you join us on that. Right now, it is March 19, 2022. Good morning, everybody. 1.893 market cap for cryptocurrency. We're up 4.25%. Bitcoin now 41,800 plus. Ethereum is 2,900 plus, almost touching three grand. We see XRP at 81 cents this morning. It's up 4.69% on the 24 hour. It is 82 cents on Fiat Link right now. 4.52%. 4.52%. Now, I just need to make a note of that because that is really getting up and out of here just overnight here. So, 8233. Three. I just need to make a note of that there. Let's get into this. Yesterday, we did a video. Shout out to Linda P. Jones and Jimmy Valley going over the different valuation models they use, plus the uh, use of the Susan Athey Board of Directors from Ripple and Robert Michnick, formerly of Ripple, and now at BlackRock, head of digital assets, using the calculator here. I do want to point out that, and I did say in the video, and I even put a little uh, reminder, I'm sure we are not using the calculator exactly proper right? Because I'm not a mathematician and I don't know what all of these fields are for. So I wanted to show you, and a couple people pointed this out too. The total estimated daily transaction volume is bar one. So we were using yearly numbers or total numbers value, which may not be the daily estimated volume, right? So that could show an inaccuracy right there. Like I said, this was a thought example, a thought exercise, or an example of a thought exercise to really understand not what the large number would be for the price of XRP, but the potential and possibility for a large price because of adoption. I don't want to get lost on that. Fair market value, not today. Today it is 82 cents because they're not using it to do the things that we know that they're going to do. We need to be thinking about what it is going to be used for and that true fair market value. Now, with that said, I do want to remind people here that the calendar or calculator, excuse me, is default settings just like this. 19 trillion, the way it comes, 5, 30, 5, 60, and 5. And if you just calculate what the default settings in the calculator are, you get a $1,632.35 XRP from the default settings in the calculator. So I find that to be pretty inspiring too. Again, this is all about trying to really get our mind wrapping around the idea of what real adoption is going to look like I think not too long after we see clarity, not financial advice, but take a look at this because I'm going to break down this tweet. Shout out to Charles Gasparino. He says, breaking Elizabeth Warren's crypto bill comes after banking execs tell Congress and White House that they need to crack down on the digital industry in order to solidify sanctions against Russia, banks executives say. More now. Now, listen. Uh, Again, shout out to Charles for this, but I'm going to decipher this the way I read this really here. And it is Elizabeth Warren's crypto bill is really showing you where the money in her campaign is coming from in the lobbying sector. And it's from the banks and the banks are using the Russian conflict with Ukraine to say it is to solidify sanctions because of the digital industry crackdown they need when In reality, I think it's about Elizabeth Warren really pursuing the narrative and helping the banks become in control of the on and off ramps along with governments for the digital world itself. They want to get paid. The last 12, 13 years that this 
uh, market has even existed with digital assets and Bitcoin and everything else that's birthed from it. They haven't made a dime, and now they want to. This right here is an <laughs> excellent point here from digital asset investor Jeremy Hogan chimes in. DAI says here plaintiff attorneys everywhere should be filing lawsuits regarding Ethereum being a security. Think of the damages the SEC has said on record that they have not made a decision on Ethereum one way or another. It's ripe for lawsuits. Well said, DAI. Jeremy Hogan says, sue the Ethereum Foundation for selling unregistered securities and cite to the Ripple versus SEC case at every opportunity. Don't tempt me, DAI. Don't tempt me. Oh, that's good stuff. This is really good stuff, too, by the way. This is J.W. Verrett, who uh, actually was on the SEC Investor Advisory Committee, and he's sharing his views on the abuse of the Howey test by the SEC here. I'm not going to go over the whole thing. The article is remarkable, and I'm going to highlight just really one two things out of it very quickly, but I want to read this to you here where he says the Howey test has been cited in hundreds of appellate opinions. Many have expanded it beyond its original meaning in the original case almost 90 years ago. The original language talked about profit solely from the efforts of others. To say that the element has been watered down by circuit courts is the wrong metaphor. It has been Niagara Falled. How about that one? How about that one? Shout out to this guy and his courage. He does remark in this article, which you should read all of. It's on my Twitter. Uh, it says here, you know, it was a huge win for the fair notice defense for Ripple, and the ruling likely improves Ripple's odds as the case dra drags on. But then he goes on down here, and I wanted to highlight this. Individuals purchasing, purchasing XRP typically know nothing about Ripple Labs. They purchase XRP for its value as a commodity and as a form of quasi-currency. Notably, XRP is classified as a currency by the U.S. Department of Treasury. Hello, come on in. Nice little reminder right there. And this here is coming from Jim, James Filan right here. This is a post. Remember this about the, uh, the original back on March 11th here about the defendants moved to strike an impermissible late filed supplemental expert rebuttal report written by Dr. Albert Metz. Well, shout out to the person who sent me this. Uh, Dr. Metz is a securities and finance expert with deep ex experience in credit analysis, financial modeling. And this here is his profile. But what I want to show you is this right here. As agencies act to regulate activities, emerging space, litigation, investigations, enforcement actions are increasing. The Brattle Group experience with economics, financial markets, coupled its deep knowledge of cryptocurrency ecosystem, allow our experts to provide turnkey consulting and testimony services across the industry. It says here our clients include major law firms, authorities such as the Securities Exchange Commission, the DOJ, and the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, FINRA. You know, what I'm pointing out here is this. Maybe we should FOIA request the SEC about Dr. Albert Metz. I'm curious how baited that testimony may actually be. Looking right here, Stuart Alderati puts out an op-ed here. He says, I penned an op-ed for RC Markets on what crypto industry needs from U.S. policymakers in order to foster American innovation. I'm going to give you just a piece of this, but you should read the whole thing. Developing regulatory framework here for cryptocurrencies and digital assets will not be as simple as a simple exercise, but threatening innovators with suits at every turn will have tragic consequences for the benefits and economic growth that digital assets and blockchains have the potential to unlock. Fortunately, there are existing legislative proposals from members on both sides of the political aisle to modernize facets of the current financial services oversight structure to create framework tailored for crypto. I deeply believe in this approach, and that is the reason Ripple laid out a framework designed to offer an intermediate, pragmatic way forward 
which accounts for the dynamism of digital assets. Well said by Stuart Alderati here. I mean, you know, they're just under attack. He said, if there's one thing and lesson I've learned in litigation at entire cryptocurrency industry users is that regulation by enforcement doesn't provide the regulatory clarity needed by innovators and consumers. Unfortunately, in an effort to advance its own jurisdiction, the SEC seems to prefer what one current commissioner describes as pursuing an agenda of strategic ambiguity. How about that? I mean, this is this is just this is what this case for the SEC is about, right? It's pursuing strategic ambiguity and broadening and expanding their jurisdiction. That is just deplorable, to be honest with you. Now, let's take a look quick here from Hall of Famer Michael, who shows us what are the most active investors in blockchain companies doing? Well, I'll tell you what they're doing. They're dropping tons of money into blockchain companies they are invested in. You can see this is blurry, I know, but you can see some of the regular actors here, whether it's R3 or DCG, Digital Currency Group, and many, many others, but it's Alphabet, Citigroup, MasterCard, Goldman Sachs, Samsung, Visa, Microsoft, JP Morgan Chase, PayPal, Intel. And when you hear me say that I am putting my pennies next to their dollars, these are the people I'm talking about. Take a look right here, Ratha Kahneman. This is a paper, and this is changing gears a little bit, but this is taking us now into the fact that we, in fact, Ripple and XRP, the XRP ledger and the interledger protocol, let us not forget, the combination thereof and their partners are, in fact, dismantling SWIFT. This is the first example right here, enabling resilient interledger payments with an intrusion tolerant overlay, proposing a method to enable secure global payments across multiple ledgers using interledger. This is written by scholars, including Anakal Molotar, Molotra, I think it is, and forget about it. I know I just train wrecked your name and forgive me. RippleX, it shows right here in this paper, they propose secure payments overlay. It says a service that enables global payments across multiple ledgers by combining the transaction exchange provided by the interledger protocol with an intrusion tolerant overlay of the relay nodes. And then it gets much more complicated from there, but you get it, interledger protocol. Then I remind you of this news that came out this week. Clearinghouse is currently working on development of cross-border systems that could potentially replace SWIFT. Say it isn't so, but it actually is. And this is the reminder right here that Clearinghouse is working on a development of cross-border payment system that could potentially replace SWIFT in collaboration with Wells Fargo. The system is called Real-Time Payments. The service would be uh, would allow real-time payments transfers of digital currency payments between eligible Wells Fargo accounts, including real-time payments, posting immediate confirmation in a secure two-way messaging system. That is the Ripple Partner Company right there. Ripple Partner. Take it, check it out. Pretty amazing stuff, and it doesn't stop there because it gets even bigger. Because Ripple and their partners, as I said, are dismantling SWIFT brick by brick. You don't need 100% market capture to bring them to the negotiating table. And take a look right here. This is Neom right here is what we're talking about. Neom has launched a new brokerage payment solution that offers international financial payments, a faster, more cost-effective method to settling transactions to select U.S. brokerage and brokerages, enabling customers to easily invest in U.S. equities. The new solution, which leverages Ripple's blockchain network, RippleNet, claims to lower settlement costs for financial institutions by up to 90% for international brokerage account transactions when compared to transactions settled via SWIFT international payments. 90%. You're going to lower the cost. Let me tell you what a business is do. You tell a business that you can lower their cost by 3% and they're jumping ship and coming over. 90%? You watch what happens. This is going to be remarkable. Now, this is a reminder about the Wrath of Common news here about the ILP, right? The ILP, the, the, here it is right here. Don't believe me. This is the article years ago. We covered this a couple years ago here. But I want to show this to you because it's a really, really important piece of news. The ILP was, in fact, gifted to the W3C. The W3C is the Worldwide Web Consortium 
And oddly enough, you can actually see the interledger information on the W3.org. So, you know, if you're wondering if it really was, it was, right? So the W3C also in control of the interledger protocol. This is almost the exact same as the IP for the internet, but for money and value. ILP are a set of protocols that make sure a payment and settlement can bounce from one network to another through multiple networks to reach a final destination. Ripple made this protocol and gifted it to the W3C. So if you trust the internet, it is time that you start to trust the W3C, the XRP ledger, and the ILP. And with that, I wrap with this right here, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. BXRP, also known as Nick Burefadio from Link2. And make sure you go check out and get yourself some Ripple Uphold, all of that. Link2 as well, the top sellers before it's all gone. Based on Ashish Birla's recent statement from the head of general manager or head of uh, RippleNet, when he said, we are close to having global ODL coverage, which is super exciting. Here's a map that approximate coverage in blue make it a great day you can see the only one left to fall in this illustration is the united states and i believe we're going to get that clarity very very soon i just think this is really a great way to leave it today understanding all the progress that has been made thus far you know I really believe that there is going to be a moment to come, and this is not financial advice, just my digital perspectives, but I really do believe that there's going to be a moment to come here where we see Swift and RippleNet really come together. I do believe that. That's going to do it for me. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Not financial advice. I'll catch all of you on the next one.